it's, it's, it's for us it was about how can we take a chance on talent build a show around them and and that's when the commissioners can go yeah i can see one that the audience is there the numbers you can't tell me no you can't tell you me get, don't, don't give me because, because does the shoe fit it's got 130 million views to it you know what i'm trying to say so yes, how sir. does that show not work because it's got a, it's got an audience there you go Welcome back, people, to the Table Read Podcast. I hope everyone is well, happy, and smiling. Now, I'm smiling a lot right now, because a man right next to me is a very good friend of mine and a very special guest. All of you all know exactly who he is. We've got plenty of stories to tell. Without further ado, Mr. Percival Ascot. <laughs> I had to keep making it a special one for you, my brother. This ain't a regular <laughs> guest you got in there, you know what I mean? Hey, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm grateful to be here, you know. I Listen, we're grateful to have you, bro. Yeah, Listen, yeah. I swear. We've been talking already about, mm. yeah, just like how we met and um, how old you was when we first met and stuff like mm. that. So, and obviously I've been watching I've been watching everything you've been doing. Do you know what I'm saying? My Your guy, career. And also Man United as well. Yeah, come on. I'm not going to talk about what happened on Sunday, but it's yeah, all good. You know what I mean? It's all good. It's all good. Sorry. But yeah, I'm grateful that, you know what I'm saying? I mm. see your tweets and stuff. I'm always tweeting about United. So my guy. You. My guy. <laughs> so yeah, we, I've, I've known you for... We literally just talked about this and I've yeah. forgotten already. So, so you were 13, right? When something I, like that. Like 12, 12 like, yeah. 13. When, when we first met, we worked on something that we'll talk about. Yeah, so almost about 10... It was coming to 10 years. Coming to 10 years. Yeah, 10 years, bro. But in those 10 years, man, a lot has happened <laughs> for both of us, but for you in, in general, a lot has happened in those 10 years mm. um, in different aspects of your career, mm. which we're going to get into. But before we get into that, I want to go back to the beginning. Mm. Beginning, man. How did everything start for you? How did it all begin? Boy, um, so I think, yeah, so for me, my story started, I think, when I was, um, yeah, I started off when I was in primary school. Mm. Yeah, so... Um, Went to primary school. I was about eleven years old, and I did um, Jungle Book as like my school play. Okay. And then I remember like getting the character um, Mowgli, yeah. And I remember, bro. I just was so like, I don't know why, but I just remembered all of my lines, yeah. And then I remembered everybody else's. And my mum said to me the story was like when she was watching me do the performance. Um, I was telling people, whispering their lines to them. <laughs> Whilst I was on stage, I'm innit? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing the lead role. Man's been the playing the lead role. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I'm helping uh, uh, people do the lines. And I don't know why to this day, uh, how my brain was able to remember my lines and theirs anyway. Mm. But when I went to um, secondary school, I went to, uh, I grew up in South East London, um, Big Up Penge, where I grew up. Mm. And um, I went to a school called Kelsey Park. Mm. Yeah, it's now called Harris Academy. You know, these are Harris Academies. Is that what I thought it was always um, called Harris? Was it called something else before? Yeah, then? something else oh, before. Fuck. Yeah, a lot of schools, to be honest, were something different before. And obviously, for a lot of reasons, they changed. But mm. when I went to Kelsey Park, yeah, I actually didn't, I didn't like acting at all. Because right. in that first, it was an all boys school. Mm. It was, you know, anyone that knows Kelsey, uh, my age group, would know it was rough back then. So um, you couldn't even tell people like you like performing arts and acting and stuff. Look at you, sideways. So um, mm. yeah, hundred mm. percent. So I remember um, I I hated acting in in fact when I was in year seven. So I, you know it wasn't even a a career choice for me. Football was what I loved. Um, I wanted to be you know I was quite small. Mm. Um, Patches Ever was my one of my favorite players. So I was <laughs> trying to be a little Patches Ever. You know what I'm trying to say. But um, yeah, it wasn't until I went to my next school. So my area was a bit rough or whatever. So my mum was like, look. Uh, you know, moved me and, and, and I went with my mum and stepdad to uh, Coulsdon, where I grew up basically, mm. which is outskirts of Croydon. And then, yeah, one of my first day in this new school, um, starting in, new, new, you know, year eight, it was kind of daunting, but my, my first class was drama. Mm. And then that teacher, uh, she just, you know, I, I just was so warm to the lesson. She was cool. And then, yeah, bro, I got a merit after my first class. And literally it was like, I didn't, I didn't even really think about drama too tough. I just liked being in her classes and her lessons. And as go. a teacher, she was so cool. And then that's when it kind of picked up for me, man. And by year, sort of year nine, year 10, I was like, yeah, I need to get to the Brit school. And then she helped me, you know, with my audition and stuff for like that. And yeah, Brit school is where it kind of took off. There you go. Did you do theatre from the jump when you went to Brit school? Yeah, I did theatre from the jump. Did you go from year 10? No, I, did, I went from year 12. Year 12, yeah, okay, 12, okay, 12. okay, okay. When did you, yeah? I went year 10, but I, I did film and media at first. Okay. I, I was already acting. And I kind of went to Brit school and kind of wanted to take a break from acting a little bit. I okay. kind of explored other options, so I did form of media. Wow. Which is kind of, it's not acting, but it's kind of yeah, in the same route of like, realm. you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So I said, let me do that and learn how to be a filmmaker. And after two years of that, I said, no, 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 I miss acting, you know, I need to get back to it. So <laughs> I need to get back into it. I, I did media at Brit school 
Why, yeah, like an option? As an option, yeah. Uh, but then I, I actually dropped out of media. So mad, yeah. How come we yeah. just didn't like it? No, it was like because... <laughs> I like the practical, practical stuff, but I didn't like the theory. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's so the, the typical time, reason. By the time the course got to theory, I was like, yeah, by this day, I'm long, out. Long. I'm out. But um, I didn't realise, obviously now with everything I do, but I didn't realise how important media was going to play a role in terms of my career and there stuff. You know what I mean, but yeah, like I didn't um, even in Brit school when I was doing theatre, I did my, my script writing course. Yeah, where we did. You know, you learn. Sweet, how to, yeah, yeah. I, I was terrible. I was rubbish. Like even um yeah, me and Javan, I think we got like you know we didn't really do well at all in the slightest. So to see everything how it's turned out to you know in terms of like the things that we've gone and done or the projects, it's like the things that we didn't we were we weren't necessarily good at or I didn't see mm. coming. It was part of the plan, you know. There we go. Now and, and it's yeah, it's just mad. Obviously, what was that transition like from going from secondary school? You're just doing drama yeah. as like an option. Then going to Brit, where we know how it is, it's damn near every single yeah. day. There's four different elements of theatre you got to work on. Was that hard jumping? It from? was, it was, it was. I mean, I mean, you know what it was? It was, it, it was kind of even hard because I was. Um, I mean, I, I don't have an excuse. I lived in Croydon and school was in Cellar, so it was like yeah, around the corner. Far, yeah. However, I was getting to school late, um, <laughs> pretty much. Like yeah, for the first couple of weeks. I remember Stuart Walden was my teacher. My Stuart, teacher. Oh, we had him as a teacher. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't be late as a principal and, and, and teacher, bro. <laughs> but he wasn't a principal back then. Oh, was he? No, 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 no. He was just a teacher. He was literally a drama teacher. Literally. I didn't even know he started. Yeah, for... he did, yeah he did you learn something yeah. every day. I didn't know he yeah. was a teacher. So that's why, like, even now with Brit School, I've got such a good relationship with the schools because, you know, Stuart was my teacher. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember one of the days, um, one time I come, I come in late and um, he called me to his office and he didn't shout, he didn't say anything mad, nothing like that. He just said, he said, Percy, you need to fix up. And bro, that was enough. That's I what it takes you, sometimes, but sh- like, like the fear of God was in my heart. I was like, <laughs> yeah, because I'm not trying to mess up this opportunity. But it was part of the transition. It was, it was like me learning how to like just get to school on time. Um, and I just took everything seriously, man. Like I think, even when I look back at school, sometimes uh, we had like people come into school, uh, professional opportunities is what mm-hmm. they called it, mm-hmm. and they would like sometimes even like someone came to school one time and he was like, yeah, only. Um, a certain percentage of you guys are gonna make it, yeah. And it was really hard to hear that because imagine there was like eighty of us in this like form group the, the whole year of our theatre strand, and if for him to say only like ten or twelve people are gonna make it, it was like what? You don't have to like, see that. I'm if looking you're around and going, yeah. yo, it? like we've got bare people in yeah. here that are sick, they're talented. Like there's no way that what you've just said is true, you know. Um, but in actual fact, it's like it's funny, like that. It it kind of happened, and it happened because of work ethic. It happened mm. because of disciplines basically so i think for like myself and i'll probably talk about my story a lot with javan as well because mm. we share a lot of things together but mm. i think in brit school we learned a lot about discipline and um i remember um mine and javan's first interaction together because we weren't when i got to brit school i say this often in, in our sto- in the story in the journey like me and javan weren't friends immediately All right. um it kind of was one of those things where i was very introverted javan was very extroverted so mm. we were very different in school and um, I probably made friends with different people mm. and vice versa. But it wasn't until we did Shakespeare together and we both played the leads. I don't know how I got the, the, <laughs> the lead role. Because honestly, I wasn't really, I, I was still in my show. I was still kind of trying to sort of come up my show and stuff. Mm. But I did the, the lead role with him and me and him were putting in extra rehearsal time, like outside of school. And that's when we both clocked. We was like, yo, like we're both in sync here, you know, in terms of work ethic. So... We just kind of matched each other's like energy and then before you know it yeah we did the performance my family his family like you know very proud of us both and that was it like me and him were friends from that point on basically and to, to this day yeah to this day to this day to this day so yeah like um brit school taught me a lot man mm. it taught me a lot it, it, it helped me develop as an actor developed as a person i did my first bb i did my first acting credit when i was at school as well when's in brit school yeah okay. in brit school and that was techie what was that that was called a sh- it was a show called excluded yeah? yeah it was like a one-off bbc drama okay. about about school yeah and i remember it was filmed in bristol and i remember um this woman she came in a casting director and she did like a workshop with us mm. and then she picked out like five of us in at the workshop to come to white house we, we, white city sorry mm. uh, bbc to do the actual audition okay and um i i did it my stepdad you know he took me and you know i went there did my thing and yeah they offered me the role but i, I didn't have an agent at, at this point yeah so she was the she was helping me with everything basically and um i remember like school it was tough because 
they were like they weren't really on letting me go to do uh, this I know project. All about that one, trust you know me. what I'm trying to say? And I, I know why I get everything why because because mm. the school has got to you know it's got to protect its students from yeah. you know being too premature to go into the industry. I talk about a lot about that in my story because when I did um, a, a show I talk about in a second, Wizard vs Alien CBBC, mm -hmm. that was actually very daunting for me. And actually, I struggled for the first like three months of that job, wow. and I was like close to giving up everything. I, I couldn't. Um, that that transition was so uh, hard for me, man. Mm. But anyway, when I got back to excluded, um, yeah, the school was kind of like you know uh, if and kind of thing whether or not I can do it. The, the shooting period was in summer holidays, so they couldn't really say much. Yeah, true. So I went out to do it in Bristol. But you know that's what I'm saying. Like Brit School had everything for me, and then mm. and, and obviously the the cherry on top of Brit School was man them on the wall. There you go. You know, me and Javan was getting to the end of the course. The year thirteen was like, oh, what, you know, what what should we do after Brit School? And um, me and him both were like adamant. We were like, we're not going drama school. We're not going university. Because we felt as though uh, we, we had enough to kind of go out there, do like maybe a, some auditions on the side, do a part-time job and see what happens basically. Right? I was the same when I left Brit as well, you know. And then, yeah. And, you know, one summer, you know, straight after we finished school, um, we were like milling around and, and then eventually we were like, look, let's get productive. And then, yeah, Man on the Wall was birthed, you know, in that summer <laughs> holiday. And... That was it. <laughs> like Iconic. for the next five years of my, for the next ten years of my life, like it's not. Listen, not, it's changed. The, the word iconic gets thrown around a lot. <laughs> man, on the wall was iconic, man. Like I swear, that had Thank the streets you, in a chokehold when it, when it first came out. And Thank even you, when it, even when you guys, I remember, I'm I'm gonna be jumping back and forth yeah, between yeah, things yeah. here and there. But I remember when you guys appeared on Youngers mm. as Man, on the wall. Mm. Mm. It was at that first time where people was like. Right, like you can really do that. Yeah, you can really start your yeah, own thing yeah, and break yeah, into yeah. mainstream media. That's, and even for us, that was, was like, crazy. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. Because I remember when we did Man on the Wall, the whole plan was in fact to get to TV. Okay. Like we, we knew from the jump, like we, we was like, yep, we're going to do this thing and, and build there. Get on and TV. it's mad because there was no blueprint. Like you mentioned, there was no real, no one had done it in that kind of uh, pathway. Like nah. now, social media content wise, obviously I'm involved in that heavily. Like mm. you can look at Young Philly's career, you can look at Chunks' career and go, okay, here's a map to understand how you can maneuver. Exactly. But with us and Youngers, it wasn't that case. So when we did Man on the Wall, we dropped the first episode you know, I remember overnight it was it did five thousand views, and Javan still got the screenshot. Literally, I text him saying five thousand views overnight. We have lift off, yeah, whatever I said, and um, that thing just kept on jumping, 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 and um, we got to like four months in of doing it, the fourth episode, and that's when we first got the email from from Channel Four to say, you know, come and have a conversation, and big up. There's a writer called Levi. Um, who, who brought us into the conversation because he was a fan of watching Man on the Wall. Mm. He got this new job for Youngers because they replaced the writer on, on the project. And Levi was like, you know, I think they asked him, like, how would you spice up the show? And he was like, oh, yeah, I'll get in these guys called Man on the Wall. Damn so, yeah, cool. it was Levi's idea, really, um, that, that kind of led us to, to being on Youngers. And I remember us getting the email, going for the meetings and conversations. We were just gas, bro. We <laughs> yeah, were like, listen, man. And you know what it is? It's like, you know, when you have a dream and you don't know how to get there, but you walk by faith, mm -hmm. you know, and for it to happen, for us to actually attract that opportunity, it, it taught me the, the best life school I can ever, ever have because it taught me that when you do put your mind to something, it will happen. You know what I'm trying to say? If you do work hard in something, it, you, can, you can make these things manifest for itself. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Talk me through, I've always wondered how, because partly doing kind of stuff myself, like film my own things here and there, mm. I know what my process was to get things done, mm. like timing work, because you just me by myself. But to try and get all three of you at the same space at the same time was it easy or was it difficult because <laughs> i know how sometimes it could be long yeah it is difficult things. i think um there's a phrase that they say in it like um if you want to go far um sorry if you want to go fast uh go by yourself or if you want to go far go together facts and you know working with the guys for as long as we were working together so closely like that um we were all different stages in our lives uh, we had different personal things going on at the same time. Mm. So it was like a marriage. You know, I always say this all the time, um, working with Jav and D and the rest of the girls, more of us behind the camera as well that were all together. Um, and back then, you know, we didn't have all the, all the technology, like we didn't have all the, all the equipment nowadays and, and social media was different. We didn't have Instagram. It was just Facebook. Mm. So it was very limited. It took us like 30 days to shoot an episode of Man on the Wall. It took, days. it took 30 days. One it, episode? One episode, bro. Wow. One episode, yeah. Because some of the episodes are like 20 minutes yeah. long, 25 minutes long. And the reason why it took that long as well is because 
I was shooting Wizards vs. Aliens oh, Monday okay. to Friday in Cardiff. And as you know, you get, you know, you finish, you wrap on that Friday. What I was doing was getting on the train from, from Cardiff to Paddington to come to shoot Man on the Wall. Man on the Wall, straight off the train. Straight off the thing, bro. So Saturday, Sunday, I was filming Man on the Wall. And then Sunday night, I was going back up to Cardiff to shoot Wizards for the next week. And then obviously, I'm trying to learn my lines for that show at the same time. I'm on the phone in the week or working with Jav on it and D in terms of writing the script for Man of War. So it was very tough, man. I remember like, um, there was a couple of times with Wizards, like it got sticky. Like mm. I, I, I almost missed my train to get, to get back up to Cardiff. Um, I remember one time, yeah, like I woke up, like I was filming or whatever. We, I woke, basically I fell asleep. I was meant to wake up at a certain time to catch the train. Mm to get to a Cardiff, uh, like basically my call time was at 2 p.m. in yeah. Cardiff. However, I woke up at like 11 a.m. in my, like on yeah. a Monday morning in London. <laughs> and I'm like, oh The, the maths crap. ain't nothing, boy. You ain't gonna yeah, get there Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was you. like, the train is already two and a half hours. I, I'm, I'm already in South East. I've got to get all the way to Paddington. And mm. I'm like, I remember I woke up, I went to Japan. I was like, yo, please, bro, drop me to Lewisham now, literally. I didn't even brush my teeth, nothing. I like, <laughs> Javan hopped in the car, sped down to Lewisham, I jumped on the train, I managed, managed to call um, the production department and I was just like, yo, um, you know, I'm so sorry, like, is there anything, you know, <laughs> you can do? And somehow, I don't know how I didn't get in trouble, but they were like, yeah, don't worry, we'll just, we'll move the scene around, you know, so you come in when you get into Cardiff and then we'll just shoot your scene later. Nice. So luckily, I, I managed to shoot that scene at, I'd say, like five o'clock or whatever, mm. right? But this is what I'm saying, it was, it was me juggling both worlds and eventually for wizards i had to choose i had to i, I made a choice and sacrificed uh, wizards for men on the wall basically because i knew this is where i belong i, I, I my future was was you know with with man on the wall basically i would dress about archery as well did yeah. it ever come to a time where you thought i got to choose between one or the other yeah, it was the case it was the case and I, I remember it was hard because i i you know i was walking with my heart like in terms of leading with my heart but Obviously, when I'm talking to these BBC execs and stuff, I remember we sat down at uh, Paddington, it's a, uh, the Hilton Hotel just outside. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had, you know, the big, big, you see with Wizards as well, it's the Doctor Who execs that run the show. I didn't even know that. Yeah, so, okay. so it's because it's, it's, it's the Doctor Who team who did the Sarah Jane Adventures, then they made Wizards. Came with but it, it's, it's in the same kind of universe, but it's not, you know? So yeah. it's like, kind of like, this, it's just the same team. Cause we shot, we shot next door to Doctor Who. Not like an unofficial spin-off. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So literally next door was like Matt Smith and all okay. them shooting Doctor Who. So um, I remember I sat down with them and I was with my agent at the time and then I was just like nervous, bro. And I had to break the news to them to be like, they were trying to convince me to stay. Mm. And then we, you know, having this kind of back and forth, they were kind of like selling me like, oh, okay, look, you know, we'll make the show more about your character. We'll do this, we'll do that. But I was just like adamant. I was like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, I have to do this. Like, I have to do this. I have to be obedient to, to, to my mission. Mm -hmm. And I think we agreed um, that I was going to do, say, like three, ep four episodes to kind of like, to tell my story. Mm -hmm. um, so my character in the show basically goes to like America or whatever. So they got to see out my character in a nice way. It wasn't nice. like an abrupt ending. You just cut out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, I didn't do that to them. Cool, nice. But yeah, it, it was still tough, bro. Like imagine I'm 19 years old, uh, walking away from this security of, of wizards, you know, and not many, I don't think, and that's one thing as well, like it wasn't just me. Javan also had the same situation mm -hmm. and also D. There was a lot of opportunities. I think Javan got offered Hollyoaks at one, one stage, you know, like a year contract, you know, <sighs> money's all there. When we did Man on the Wall, we were broke. We were broke for five years. We were struggling. Mm. Like I'm talking like, I remember one time we were outside Jay's yard and something happened. Like, you know, I can't remember what it was. Some money stuff, bro. And that's the thing with us. Like we were so, we were in the creative. We were, we were so in love with what we were doing. We were so passionate about what we were doing. There was nothing you can tell me. Like I remember I used to cycle, I used to ride my bike from Croydon all the way to Bromley. Yeah. To, to, to meet up at Javan's house to talk about, you know, with, you know, discuss, sit, write, whatever. I remember one time we were, you know, and sometimes we get days where it would be low, proper low, because, you know, I can't pay my phone bill or whatever happened. Mm. I remember it was outside Jay's yard, just on the street, bro. Like, you know, like just sat on the floor, just cars are driving past us, but we were just all quiet in silence. Just can't believe the, the kind of the madnesses that were going on in our personal life. But, you know, it was one of those ones where you had to suck it up and be like, yo, we have to keep going. Like, we have to continue. Like no one... That level of uh, struggle mm. is something that would always remain with me because 
where we are now, of course, with the company and everything like that, yeah. I always take myself back to how we got here. And it's important to do that Facts. because you need to remember your humble beginnings, all that type of stuff, right? But it was tough. It was really tough. So I, when I go back to saying about the marriage thing with the boys, it, that's why I say it's a marriage because we had to choose this thing every single day. We had to repair our friendship um, in, in, in all kinds of ways. Um, and we had to kind of yeah, fight for each other, bro. <sighs> fight for each other all the time. I didn't even know any of that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really, I'm grateful that you're, like, you're sharing that. Yeah. Cause that's just a lesson to people that yeah. if you want something, yeah. No, you're gonna get there if you work hard, but it's not gonna yeah. be easy. It's gonna be easy. It's never gonna. It, it be comes easy. with sacrifices. There bro. you go. It comes like I know, like I've been grateful enough and had the pleasure to experience other people's journeys now. Mm. Like where it would be Young Philly, yeah. you know, I'm, you know, we met him when he was in Snapchat Sunday Stories, Young Philly, to like where he is now, yeah. or meeting Chunks for the first time, or meeting Harry Pinero for the first time, and seeing where, they, where these men are now. Um, I'm so grateful to have that experience to see it, but I also saw the struggles and the kind of sacrifices that those it guys took to made. Even exactly. get to where they are now. And that's what I'm saying. The formula, it doesn't like, it's just part of the formula, bro. It's part of the journey. It's part of the journey. Obstacles and I know, and I, I, I know you probably had obstacles in your yeah, acting bro. career as yeah, well. Yeah, like, been many. I know, I know it's, <laughs> it's never, been many. this thing is never clean cut. Yeah. And if anything, like I like that sometimes because um, I feel like the journey shapes who we are Facts. and it, it helps us, it molds us into the characters that we're supposed to become. Listen, saying that, yeah, <laughs> I have my notes. Saying yeah. that, like you said, it, it built you to where you guys are now. Yeah, I'm just gonna read off a few little accolades, right, for uh, for Wall of Entertainment. Yeah, go. Ahead. <laughs> Forty-five original shows, six billion, capital B billion plus <laughs> views and counting. Clients including Netflix, Spotify, Amazon, and Channel Four, with 25 employees and generating seven million plus mm. a year. So when we say that obstacles are gonna come if you ever see an obstacle and you think oh, i want to quit remember things like that mm. remember those accolades it's gonna come but you have to keep pushing and working and go through every obstacle because you never really know when those numbers and those kind of accolades what corner they're at yeah. they can easily get there you might be in, like there might be one little wall mm. and you're like oh that wall's too high that stuff might be behind that one wall that you quit at so keep going but enough of me being a personal TED Talk kind of guy. <laughs> On to that. That's ridiculous. I didn't know any of that. Thank you, man. Shout man. out to you. I forgot the Instagram page that posted it was numbers, that. numbers, numbers game. There yeah, we yeah, go. Yeah, Shout yeah. out to them for posting. Yeah, I remember reading that game. going, what in the world? Yeah. I didn't know. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And just saying that it started from random on the wall. Mm, just mm. you guys mm. going back and forth, trying to create one little thing mm. to that. Yeah. So my question is, did you not think it was going to come to that when you were starting random on the wall? Obviously, no. you must have been optimistic, but that's crazy. Yeah, that's no, madness. No, not 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 to that not to that degree. Mm. Um, definitely, like it was. I would say my uh, vision was more like, you know, not. I hate to use the word. It's not selfish, but it was more like I knew that me we were gonna have our shows, mm. our ideas made right. But did I see us creating a platform for other people? Um, a company that, that also serviced people. No, I didn't see that at all. Um, that came about in 2015. It was like five years into, or four, four years into Man on the Wall, basically. We got to a stage where there was a lot of politics within the TV world with youngers and stuff like that. We was meant to, basically the whole plan was that we was meant to get our own TV show commission. Wow. And then what had happened was they said, oh, yeah, yeah, no, we'll, like, we'll get to your show, but first do youngers and then we'll pitch your show. And then, of, yeah, so we, we mm. hanged about. Mm. They even told us, don't make any more online content. Save it. Save your ideas. Exactly. Yeah. You see where I'm going with it. <laughs> save your ideas for when you get to make your own TV show. So we listened to them, thinking that they know best. And then eventually it get to, got to the time where they were trying to get Younger Season 3 commissioned. And the commissioner was like, oh, you know, we're, I'm actually going to stop doing the show. And in fact, they left, I think there was a new commissioner. And every time there's a new commissioner, they have like their own ideas, they got their, their own, own little slate. plans, all that kind so, of stuff. So yeah, basically yeah. like we got, we got also dashed as well, like basically. So where we was trying to like, yeah, we were waiting on, on this opportunity to do our own TV show. It didn't happen for us. And it really killed us because that was the, that was the dream. Like if I'm yeah. honest with you, you know, if I could replay back time sometimes, I just feel like, man, if only we got to do our own show back, th back them times. But it was also part of the plan mm. because it diverted us to 
not only um, do the Hackney Empire live show for Man on the Wall, nice. then we went into radio. So me and the boys picked up skill sets in, in radio. Then we started to create sketches. We sold our sketch show to BBC Three. And then we were creating other content. We started creating content on our Facebook channel. And that's when the wall of comedy was like, yo, let's create a platform that can service not just ourselves in the, the experiences that we went through. It was also a platform to help other people. So mm -hmm. they don't make the same mistakes that we did. Mm -hmm. We can be there for them when they get a younger's opportunity and we can tell them, yo, like, keep making your content, you know, keep doing this or keep doing that. So that was the reason for the platform because we saw Jamal and we saw Posty do GR GRM and Link Up TV with Rashid and stuff. And, um, yeah, J J you know, I remember Javan calling me like, yo, P, like, you got to trust me on this one. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, what, what, what's, what's up? He's like, bro, I think we should change all of our social medias, like overnight, change the name, everything, rebrand the whole thing to something called The Wall of Comedy. And I'm looking at him, I'm just on the phone like, what are you, like, I just spent five years of my life building, building Man on the Wall. Yeah. And you're telling me that we're going to just like put it to one side and change it all to Wall of Comedy. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm. Like, but that's just our friendship since school, you know? Um, trust. I trust, 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 bro, trust. I trust him. He trusts me and I was like, yeah, like, you know, let's, let's do it. And then, yeah, before you know it, bro, we, we built Wall of Comedy. Um, we started to, you know, we built up a team. Um, we had like a little, yeah, man, it was mad. We had a, our, our own little social media company, like social nice. network movie. Nice. We was in the same building as a company called Uni, Unilad. Uh, oh, like oh, Lab yeah, Bible. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, Uni, them, yeah. yeah, so we learned techniques of social media from those guys and they learned some content bits and pieces from us. Nice. And, um, yeah, you know, we, we you know met Young Philly and started doing questions and all that, 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 that type of content. And we were investing our own money back into production. Yeah. And then we started to create our own original formats. Mm. And that's when we started to, you know, me and Javan started to work out how to build shows and IP around people. So I can see a talent. I could see, I don't know, I could, I could pick out a, a Mo the Comedian mm. and go, okay, cool. Like Mo, Mo needs his own James Corden type show. Let's go make that. Got that. And, and that's, that's yeah. the kind of vibe for us. It was like, well, if the TV commissioners aren't going to take a chance on us, we will. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? And, and so that was, that's one thing I learned was perception. Mm. Um, build a product. And, and that's when the commissioners can go, oh, I get it now. I see it. Because I that's what Man on All was. If I wrote Man on All on paper to you and, and got you to read it, you'd probably be like, what's going, what's, what's what's going, going on? on? Yeah. Like, yeah, three boys on a wall. Like, you can't picture it because you might not have lived that experience. You, might, that's want, the you might want to put your money Precisely. into that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because a lot of the commissioners don't come from where we come from. So Facts. they don't understand the stories that we're trying to tell and also the experiences. But we understand what it, what it is like to grow up on a wall or chilling on the block with a man them and talking and stuff. So this is what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's For us, it was about how can we take a chance and talent build a show around them and and that's when the commissioners can go yeah i can see one that the audience is there the numbers you can't tell me no <laughs> you can't tell you me no. get, don't, get, don't give me because the because does the don't shoe fit the it's got 130 million views to it you know what i'm trying to say so Listen. how does that show not work because it's got a, it's got an audience there you go so that was the point that was the point that me and javan were trying to make back then you know now along with our business partner taff as well who's mm. joined the team was about like you know, how can we eradicate that word no and, and, and prove that our ideas and our formula works, basically? You got started that from early. I remember yeah. I come, I'm a part of the Wall and Comedy Johnny the Chick you or are, Treat. Bro, you that are. That short film, that was one of my first short films yeah. I did. Yeah. And I would say I knew what Hewlett were, obviously. Yeah. Big up, yo, big up Taj, man. Like, Let's honestly, <laughs> like, I swear to God, like, he, I swear, like, you know, like, you have little brothers in the industry, yeah? This right here is my little brother in my the industry. Guy. Like, I've been watching you and your growth. And I remember you at 13, 14, your head set. Little pinned. But, but, your, but, li but your mindset <laughs> was so, like, you were, like, I knew you was going to be where you are right now. Appreciate this ain't that. a surprise for me. I appreciate that. That's like, your, your background, your mum, your whole upbringing, your brother, like, everything, like, I could, I could tell, like, from early. And that's why, like, we did that short film, Trick or Treat. And it was like, you know, you being a part of that journey so early on. Like, I remember that was 20, 2015, I think it was. 2015. Yeah, 2015. Mm. And... That's so important to our story because that was the first short film that me and the boys did. And it was like, we were thinking, oh yeah, you know, we want to be like the Wayne brothers in America. So we want to do white chicks in the future mm. and do all these movies. So trick or treat, like, yeah, it's part of like the, the foundations of everything we've built now, bro. And you, you know, you're a part of that. For, for yeah. me, see, seeing you do that and, and being in that position, because around that age, I, I didn't, I was still acting. I was still kind of new in the acting industry, of mm. course. 
but I did have my mind on, I do want to do filmmaking, I do want to do direct, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So to be on set acting and watching you lot, not only acting, obviously, but this is your thing. This is yeah. something that you lot built. I'm looking around going like, right, okay, it really is possible. I've already seen you do it with Youngers and Mandem on the Wall. But I'm like, right, like, it really is possible. It's, it's, it's reachable. I've seen <laughs> yeah, people that are right next to me and, and they're doing it. Yeah. And, and, and you carried it on. Mm. Um, so thank you. No, I've got, I got to I say, you, thank bro. you, bro. Yeah, no appreciate worries, it. Um, but yeah, okay, we're jumping back and forth. This is why I wanted to get you on, because yeah, like, there's man. so much to talk about. There's so much yeah. to talk about. So yeah, so, but... Even if that being said, your acting career hasn't stopped. No, you're it still hasn't, going. It hasn't it's still going. Go yeah. back to my notes. <laughs> Give me a second. You know, what's so my gun. Like, I get questions all the, all the time. You know? mm. People like text me. Oh, I have a text message yesterday. Right. She, uh, some girl that I know, she's a producer. She was like, "Oh, like, um, are you still acting?" And it's like I find it so amusing because, like, I've co- I am obviously still acting mm. in it, but I always feel like here in the UK, different to, different to America, it's like, you, you have to fit in a certain box. You gotta do one thing. You gotta do one thing. And if they don't see you do that thing, like all the time or whatever it is, it means that you don't do You're it. You're not that. I, I just find it so bizarre because even when me and Javan did the transition from comedy to doing the short films and stuff, and even, you know, like you would know, cause mm. you're an actor in terms of like, me and Javan were still acting, you know, we're still doing, you know, these other series and dramas and stuff. Like, Javan did um, a couple of things. Like, he did Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was doing some stuff as well. And then, I, you know, I, he did The Purge. I did The Innocents. Uh, all while running our company together as well and, and doing all these kind of things. And that was always part of the plan. Like, yeah. we we always n- knew that we can jump into that stuff because that's what we start. We, we started there from Brit School. Mm. We, we studied drama. We, we, we had that in our locker. Even doing comedy wasn't even part of the plan. Like yeah. I don't, I don't even consider myself funny. Like I don't, but I, 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 I can see comedy, but I, like to perform it, is alien for me. You mm. know, it was, so it just happened. So what I'm trying to say is like, when people were, su- were surprised when they saw like Shara's story and all mm. these kind of projects there, for me and Javan, that was like, yeah, like this is this is our bread and butter. Like this is what we do. Even me producing, directing, running this company, this is like legacy work. Mm. But my acting stuff is for pers. Like this is that's me. That's Perso Ascots. But the the company. Yeah, that's for future, you know, children, children, you know what I'm trying to say, change the, change the game kind of vibes, basically. So. Before we go, I'm going to jump into, your, like, things like the innocence and all your recent roles. Yeah. Talk, talk about Cheryl's story as well, because that was another thing that you lot have yeah. done that had the streets in the headlock <laughs> yeah. when it came out too. Yeah. What was the process with, with, with that? Because obviously mad, with, with Ratman, shout out Ratman. Yeah, shout out Shout out, shout out to him. Um, yeah. So how, how, yeah. Did that, how did that, how was the, what was the birth of Cheryl's um, story? Yeah, it was basically like... Um, yeah, I'll start by saying big up fully focused by f- first. Yeah, of course, because of course. When we when I started working fully focused, I was eighteen at the time. Mm. Yeah, I was young, and I did my first thing with them, which was like this stop and search thing project for them. And um, then uh, Teddy, who runs fully focused, me and him got a really good relationship. He's the director there. He called me. He was like, "Yo, um, I got this other film called Deep It." Mm. Um, and then I was like, "Oh no, sorry, rerun forward." And then we did rerun forward, and I called Javan. I was like. Uh, at the time, they wanted to get Roll Safe um, to come and act opposite. <laughs> big me. up, big yeah, up, big up, Roll Safe, but Coyote man. But he wanted to get that guy to, to act with me in this short film called Rewind Forward, and I was like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. But I was like, Teddy, you need to meet my boy Javan, mm-hmm. yeah. And then him and you know Javan met. And then we did the short film called Rewind Forward. It, you know, hit million views, and then that's when I think Teddy was like, okay, cool. Um, you know, we we had this 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 kind of like um, you know nice relationship between me, Teddy, and Javan. We then did another short film called Deep It, mm. and that, that picked up loads of views as well. And that's the short film that Ratman watched, and he saw Javan in. Mm. And then, you know, he was he did Blue Story as the YouTube SBTV version first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he was going to, you know, he wanted to make this thing called Sharo Story. He saw Javan in that, he was like, okay, cool, that's my Sharo. And then him and Javan were talking. Uh, this is like 2017 uh, times. And then... Uh, sh- Raps was looking for someone to play Kyle, mm. and Raps had a few people in his head in it, yeah. And then Javan was like, "Yo, Raps, I got the guy, I got the guy, I got the no guy, worry yeah, about yeah. it, bro." <laughs> no <laughs> so worry. then, yeah, like basically, um, um, I, I remember I spoke to, I went to literally round the corner from where we are right oh, this second, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We office just across opposite the road, Lennar Street, and um, Raps came to the office, and um, you know, me and him chopped up, and then yeah, like I think. 
like what it was, I remember listening to the to part one. I listened to the audio version and mm. I liked it. I was like, wow. And then yeah, Raps told me the vision. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna make it like cinema and you know do a couple scenes. Da, da, da. And I, I was just I just wanted to work with Javan again, if I'm honest with you. And I was I was eager to yeah. I was like yeah, let's see where this goes with Rap Man. You know, mm. it's the first like our first meeting was sick, and um, I literally finished in Innocence as well. Yeah. And I'll, I'll talk about that experience in a second. But um, I remember like wanting to just to kind of I was hungry to get into something and then. I think when I spoke to Raps about the character, he was surprised because I, I had bare questions for him. I was like, yo, like, why, does, why, like, why did he do this? And why, like, w you know, where's his character? You know, those actor questions in terms of the <laughs> background. And I think that showed Raps that I was serious, basically. And then he, he trusted that. Uh, I remember he told me he trusted that. That was the reason for why he, he gave me Kyle. And it was sick for me to play Kyle because usually I, I would get the character, I would get the, act, the character to play Sharo. Like, because of my demeanor and... Um, probably baby faced as well. <laughs> like it's it's very difficult to make to for people to believe in like a different side of me. Yeah. Do you get what you know what I'm trying I know, to say? I know what you mean. So I know what you mean. It was a nice challenge. It was like, okay, cool, I get to play Kyle and create this character and I went, you know, I changed my hair and you know, everything like that. I really thought about how I wanna play him. I remember we did part one and literally bro, it was just a passion project, like you know, it wasn't like me and Javan were getting paid or anyone was getting paid really. Like Raps funded it himself, you know, bless him. We shot for like 17 hours. Like it was, I think, three day shoot. We did like mad hours. Me and Javan are used to that. Um, Simon Orks, who, who you know, directed, uh, DOP did, sorry, with, and, uh, you know, worked with Raps on it. He's a sick guy, he edited it as well. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, we, we, um, we just put it all together and it was just a nice project. And I remember watching the first edit and, I watched it and I had goosebumps. I was like, oof, because you know that, la that, that literally that last bit where he finds out that I've done the mad thing, yeah? Hey, listen, I had everybody going mad. It, it, it had me mm. choked up. I couldn't believe it when I watched it and I was like, oh my God. Like, I was like, yo, I think we've hit something here. Mm. Like, and that's what I say to a lot of people is that we didn't go with the, the intentions of, make, of being viral or, or whatever. We just wanted to make something that we were proud of. Mm. That between me, Raps and, and Javan, we're very perfectionists. Every film that me and Javan have ever worked on together, you know, you catch me in him. Like sometimes like, yeah, the director won't give me notes, but Javan will come over and say, yo P, like Have raise your own it, little stuff, yeah. Raise it, man. You, you got more in you, mm. you got more in the tank. And I promise like, we've just done that through all the years. That's why we work so well together. And even Sharo is like, you know, we just, we bounce so, so, so effortlessly. Um, so anyway, when we did, when we released part one, it just, it killed it like four days, million views. We couldn't believe it. We were so shocked. And then, obviously, part two was happening, and just that 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 kind of snowball effect. It just started to go crazy. I remember like, obviously, this time Manimal had died down, so mm. I, did, I wasn't really getting stopped in the street as much and all that type of stuff. Yeah, and this then comes along. That came along. The same effect, bro. I remember same like, thing. I was like on the train, like you know, I was like, yeah, Manimal was done. Like the kids, they, it'll be, it'll be, I'll be, be all right. I'll be yeah, all right. I'll be right. It was school times, bro. Long. I got like run down. I'm about to say, you're not playing the best character to be recognized yeah, yeah, for as well. Listen, yeah, I remember I did another short film called Drawn Out. Mm. And uh, Ashley Waters. Why you told her? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a quick message, but, but go right, ahead. No, no, right. So I did a short film called Drawn Out, yeah, with Ashley Waters and a couple of mm. other actors from Top Boy. And um, I remember on the estate I was filming that, it was in North. And uh, the mandem on that estate thought that I was like really the actual Kyle. Type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They thought I was about it. So. Yeah, man, I, I said it in some other podcasts a couple of times in 90s baby podcasts and whatnot. But like, I remember just getting like G checked because people thought I was really that like that character literally stayed with me. Like people were like calling me a snake <laughs> like, in my Instagram DMs. They were cussing me out. How could you do that to your boy? I couldn't believe it. Some people don't understand like what the, 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 actors, the line, you know, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah, line. They, I'm not like, that person. For me, it was a compliment. It was like, yo, that meant like people really emotionally were connected to what we had created there. So by the time we did part three, like um, I was gassed because, um, I don't know, I was just going to say it anyway, man. Can't, can't. But like basically, uh, Jesse, you know, Lingard, yeah, like he liked it, whatever. Jay Lings. Yeah, Jay Lings. If bro. you know me, you know about and Jay Lings, bro. <laughs> That's my guy. That's my guy. Listen, I worked, I, I was grateful to, I got to work with him uh, like not too long ago for all the productions, mm. it? yeah. But basically, um, I remember in, it was like England, uh, was it Euros? Yeah, England 2018, World Cup. World Cup. Yeah, World Cup. Yeah. And then um, I think England got to like the quarters of the semis. Yeah, semis yeah, 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 semis, yeah. So I must, 
he must have messaged me or whatever about shower story and I must have, I must have messaged him back like yeah bro good luck for tomorrow you know that one's there like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice because I was like yo like the whole community was so connected to shower story it was like whether you're a footballer actor rapper just just anybody bro it was like everyone was talking about it and um it was a shame at the time because we really wanted to kind of get it to TV or get like a deal with Shower Story straight mm. away. Um, but you know, there are, yeah, we didn't quite happen, but there are some exciting developments in the making right now with Shower Story. It's not done Brilliant. for sure. That's it's it's coming back. Good to hear, good. Yeah, yeah. That but was the one thing everyone was saying was I that. I don't know in what capacity it will come back in, you know, mm. whether it be a film or a TV, I don't know what that capacity will be. I'll let raps like decide that, but definitely, you know, we're looking to to revisit it basically. We'll be looking forward to that, yeah. whatever it is, yeah. man. Because yeah, there are still a lot of unanswered questions. I know, I know people are like, "What's going on? You can't just leave us there." <laughs> um, yeah, but brilliant, man. So go, going to something you did more recently, um, yeah. going back into your acting bag. I came yeah. by. Yeah, it's a yeah. Netflix film, man. Yeah, um, watched it recently. Very good. Thank Another you, one that I'd recommend to all of you if you haven't watched it already. Thank you, man. Brilliant, 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 brilliant you. film. Your performances. Thank you so much, my man. brother. I mean, that means a lot, man. Honestly, it man, means a lot. Yeah. Um, listen, we give people their flowers here, man. Honestly, yeah. we give people their flowers. You know what? Yeah, like I didn't have a good time in Innocence. Is it? No, I didn't have a good time. Wow. I didn't have a good time. I I struggled because of a lot of reasons. Offset, I don't, I can't really go into. Mm. Um, but I found it difficult, and I came by was like the the because I did Doctor Who straight after Innocence, and mm. that was cool because I knew the, I knew the team and stuff. It was a little cameo thing, but. I came by was my like, kind of like the, the next big project basically after mm, Innocence. Innocence. And um, I remember getting the audition and stuff and just the whole process was like the sweetest. I remember going into it going, you know what P, that happened to you before. In terms of the kind of experience I had on Innocence, but you know, hopefully this is a new experience. I can, you know, let me, let me come into this with a bit, I was a bit more wiser, a bit more mature. And um, I was just like, yeah, let me just see where this goes. So basically when I got the audition, um, I didn't think too much of it. I thought, let me just do it, see how it goes. Mm. And I remember I did the self tape and then immediately I got a recall and it was like a audition with the director over mm. Zoom. And I did that with Babak, you know, he's my G, love Babak to bits, one of the best directors I've ever worked with. Um, and then it was cool. He just made me feel so, so comfortable and did the audition, bro. Again, didn't think much of it. Mm. And then the next audition was a recall chemistry test with uh, George, yeah, mm -hmm. McKay. And, He's like phenomenal, different, different, different. 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 He's a beast yeah. of an actor. And I did the, the, the thing with him and bro, it was so smooth. The whole audition process, it was like, in my story, I, I didn't mention this earlier, but basically mm. for uh, Wizard vs. Versus, Versus Aliens, I did 14 auditions. Innocence, I did about 14 auditions as well. 14 auditions? 14 auditions, yeah. 14. What? <laughs> How does <laughs> so, that even work? Because obviously when you're doing chemistry tests and stuff with people and you're leading them type of shows, like you got to keep doing it with different people. Ah, so sure, you know. I was so used to, like, I was ready for, I came by to mm. be a bit of a fight. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm used to having to fight through these auditions. And it was the one project that it didn't, it, I did three auditions quick and that thing. was it. Yeah, nah. quick. And the maddest thing is that when I read, like, when I, I didn't get the script for the audition process, right? I just got the sides. So when I finally got the script, I was reading it. And I'm skimming for the the pages, and I'm like, obviously some spoilers, but I was like, wait, George's character got, you know what I mean, duppied. I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, he's the main guy. Like, this, is, you, yeah. this is 1917 George McKay. Mm. Like, how are you killing him off? Like, where's he gone? I couldn't mm. believe it. I had to go back. I was like, no, 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 no. Then I'm reading, 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 and then Kelly, uh, you know, she she who plays his mum, she got duppied, and I'm like. What the hell is going on? <laughs> I'm like, wait, so where, where's, where am I? Like, I'm still when do, I, when do I get Yeah, yeah, when I get yeah. killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, I've read the last like, couple of scenes and I was like, oh my God. I was like, wait a minute. Like, this, this is a bigger project than I anticipated. And so, you know what? I, I, to finish off, if I came by, it was like, probably one of the best filming experiences I've ever, I ha ever had. Like, everybody, the cast. Uh, Verado, who plays my girlfriend in it, and she was amazing to work with. Hugh Bonneville, Kelly, George, everybody amazing. And um, it was just something like, I think throughout my whole acting career and every opportunity I get, um, I look at it as like milestones. Mm. So like Wizards was like my first like co-leading project um, for a kid's show, right? 
then it was like okay and then i said to myself at that time i was like i want to be a guest lead in something mm -hmm. then i was a guest lead in something a silent witness then i was like oh, i want to do a feature then i did something called x plus y with a guy called asa butterfield who was in uh sex bad education boy out to shower, bad boy out to yeah mm -hmm. shower, asa man so then basically throughout my whole career i've always wanted to like do certain challenging projects that can that can tell show myself that i can do this mm -hmm. so i came by although i wasn't like you know number one on the call sheet you know my character in terms of, he, of his story arc you know you follow him throughout the whole journey so emotionally to, to, to kind of like uh, portray that across the whole film was like okay cool let me see after all these short films I've done after all these projects let me see if I can take that same learning experience and put it into a film and sometimes I look at acting like football you know like sometimes with football you can be out of form right yeah. or, or you're only as good as your last game mm -hmm. right so Sometimes I've done projects where I, d I didn't feel comfortable, but then when I do the short films, I'm like, man, I wish I could take the same uh, confidence as I've done in that short film into the bigger projects. Mm. Um, and something I talk about my, a lot of my career is that I suffered from anxiety over the years. Wow. You know, so certain projects I've, I've, I've dealt with anxiety in the maddest way. Sometimes it's crippled me. Mm. Sometimes I've overcome it. It's, it just depends on certain projects. So when I came by, it was important for me just to, just to do that project um you know over the whole course of time and to be proud of my work that was it bro and it's the most important thing again didn't expect for the for it to be number one on netflix and all this all this type of stuff Huge. man you know innocence didn't do that you know innocence came out Innocence was sick though man but it got cancelled within a month yeah the hell it got cancelled <laughs> quick and i i i understand why because now producing writing all that type of stuff i can see what didn't quite work or whatever yeah. it was but what I'm saying is that Innocence had like 25 million marketing budget. It had 25 million production budget. It was labeled, like they were really pushing it. Mm. With, with I came by, nah, it was like no pressure, no real kind of like anticipation for it, for it needing to do, you know, um, this amount of uh, success. Mm. Literally they just released it kind of vibes, right? And it just picked up organically. And, and that was like, I loved that so much because I was just like, there was no real, pressure on my head it was just do a project enjoy it and then to see everyone else enjoy it was like sick man i was just yeah i was just proud of that like all of those acting just have fun basically so without any think without about any numbers about and all of that stuff all that yeah. kind of stuff yeah listen i hate to say this but we run out of flipping time <laughs> we run out of time yeah, you might have to do a part two sometime down the line sometime, i swear to you every time i do pods i'm like yo man i've got so many stories to tell i love and it so many anecdotes i'm like flipping heck i need to do like a two hour sitting or right, something right listen like we might have to do a part two yeah, or, down, or something down let, the future let me know man we'll there's, do there's man parts of the story but yeah but thank, ugh, my brother you, man. i, I want to thank you again man yeah. like i said we give people their flowers on this show i appreciate you and man. like I don't think some of these these younger ones coming up really understand how pivotal <laughs> you lot are in the game when it comes to like things what I'm doing right now I'm an actor but I want to have a production company that came from yeah, you lot all you, my man. my younger cousin she said she wants a, a phone or something she started to use iMovie so now she wants a camera so she can film in that wow. you go oh why do you want to do that oh can I see Taj does it I'm like okay cool you want to you want to do it because I want to do it but she doesn't understand I want to do it because of you lot wow. so she doesn't even deep how yeah. you know what I'm saying I can't lie to you just to end on that like that's one thing that me and the boys like were passionate about mm. like where like when we grew up um it was everyone had a phone right um everyone is wanted to write bars and lyrics <laughs> literally like, everyone was trying to rap. yeah that, that was it like you wanted to become a rapper that was the only thing we saw in it so now um with TikTok and all these kind of platforms it's amazing to hear when kids are like yeah I, I'm, I'm you know I want to pick up these skill sets to learn how to create content you know mm. what I'm trying to say um and I've seen it change people's lives man so it's a blessing to be a part of something that um was a movement not not just it didn't start with me and the mandem you know we were also we also picked up for other people, other people Shabrak yeah. and the mandem Jazzy A Squeezy Hamza all these people with Janik they, they were there at the same time as us and we were inspired by them also and it's important to say that because obviously you know it didn't just start from us and i'm sure it started from you know someone else uh, course, above yeah. that but all of this is a chain reaction Facts. and it's important that you know you come do your thing and you might evolve the game and inspire someone completely differently and you know we we might now take i don't know we're now following you know your direction within the game in terms of what yeah, you do and, and the films that you might tell and the stories that you, you that you there might be someone that you put on that can will tell a mad story that can mm. change people's lives so yeah man we, we do it to kind of like 
to give back and, and, and yeah, bro, hopefully that, you know, people can kind of like, yeah, hopefully <laughs> take on what we've done and so you can only you can flip and, you know, sit back and relax. Sit back, <laughs> relax, yeah, have it. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Boy. But listen, man, let the people know where they can find you on um, yeah. any social medias and that. that um, yeah, man, I'm always active on, on Instagram, uh, at Peso Asco or Twitter, um, at Peso Asco. And also just if you want to keep up to date with like the kind of stuff that we do, um, Wall of Comedy is our Instagram page and YouTube uh, Wall of Entertainment and also uh, Wall of Productions is the, the Instagram page for, for our content. So if you're trying to get into, I don't know, you know, be a runner on set, you want to um, shadow people, uh, hit us up on, on the Insta, uh, Wall of Productions. And um, it won't be me, but it'll be someone in the team that, you know, you can chat to. And um, yeah, man, hopefully we can kind of keep teaching people, you know, and give them that set experience, basically. So like you said, when you're 13, you know, you can see it, it's possible. And yeah, bro, like people can do it for themselves. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, I've got to thank you again, bro, for yeah, coming man. down and dropping. I appreciate you, man. I'm James proud of you, man. Jays, my brother. I'm proud of you, man. Yeah, next time, let's do it again, bro. we got to yeah. do, I think a part two, yeah, yeah, a part two is due. A part two is due. We'll get that done. Some production stuff. You know what I mean? We'll get yeah, yeah, that done. We'll get a part two done 100%. Yeah, can't. But yeah, thank you for tuning in once again. As usual, we'll be on Spotify. If for whatever unknown reason you don't want to look at our faces, I know why you would want, not want to do that. But if you don't want to do that, go and listen to it on Spotify. Um, like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you next time. Or you can look at our faces. It's okay. You uh, should want to look at our faces. faces. I don't know why you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Really look and truly. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Don't, don't be, cl- be smart and look at our faces. Than me. What's going on, bro? Don't do like. that, bro. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You know, let me look this off now so we get to the big conversations. Much love and peace. I'm trying to draw my beard.